Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. My name is Honorin, and today I'm with Bess Roof, who is pursuing a PhD in geography. Uh, Bess, welcome to Coffee and Conversation, and thank you for being with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Perfect. Um, first, let's start with a, a brief um, introduction about who you are. Yeah, um, so as you mentioned, my name is Bess Ruff and I am a PhD student in the geography department, actually just defended my dissertation a couple of weeks ago. So graduating in a couple of weeks, I'm very excited about it. Um, but my dissertation has looked at marine aquaculture, which is the farming of seafood in the ocean and looked at the spatial and temporal drivers of industry development at global scales, regional scales and, and national scales. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that work and that work has been funded by um, the Waite Foundation, which is a marine conservation uh, NGO, as well as the National Science Foundation. Um, my advisor uh, received a grant for that work. So um, it's been very collaborative across um, NGOs, government policy, um, policy spectrum. Um, but yeah, and you know, I have never, I am a PhD geography student, but prior to starting my PhD, the last time I had taken a geography class was my sophomore year of high school. Um, so it's been really interesting to learn about geography as a discipline. And it's, it's an interesting sort of intersection of all these different, you know, social scientists and physical scientists. And it's been really interesting to kind of like get to collaborate on both the theoretical side, as well as the more quantitative scientific side. Yeah. So how did you go from a bachelor in economics, um, a master in, you said, in environmental? Yeah, in environmental science. Science um, to a PhD in geography. Like, did you have a professor who said, oh, you know, based on your interest, I highly suggest that you do a PhD in geography or you, yeah, how did yeah, that? So it's been a very interesting journey. So <laughs> basically I ended up doing economics because I, as a type A person, uh, I think I made like a B in my first bio class at undergrad and just panicked and thought it wasn't the thing for me because I'd always wanted to be a marine biologist. And so I switched to econ, um, I think my sophomore year and by my senior year was, you know, I like my degree, but I don't like any of the jobs that people with my degree are doing. And I kind of panicked to one of my mentors in undergrad and was like, I've basically ruined my life and I'm never going to be able to do what I want to do. And he essentially was like, that's, you know, the biggest crock I've ever heard. You can pivot whenever you want to pivot. So he kind of inspired me to start looking into like um, marine conservation and marine policy grad degrees. Um, and so I ended up applying to uh, a master's in environmental science and management program at um, UC Santa Barbara. And then in between those ending my undergrad and starting my master's, I worked in DC for a marine conservation policy NGO. Um, and so I went through my master's, fully intended to get a job at the end of my master's. And then it was sort of the same thing, like looking at jobs, everything I wanted to do required a PhD of some sort. Um, and so I never thought of myself as someone who would pursue a PhD. But my, um, during my master's, I had a, an internship working on a marine spatial planning project in Bermuda. And my supervisor for that project um, actually got a job at Florida State in the geography department as a professor. And so I had an amazing experience working with her on that project and had, you know, she was very encouraging. And I think she thought I could do a PhD before I thought I could do a PhD. And so um, just after working with her and still being interested in, in moving, moving forward academically towards like these jobs that, that I wanted. So I, you know, followed her to Florida and here we are five years later with a PhD in geography. Wow. And so now what do you want to do with your PhD? Because it it sounds like every time you do a new degree, it's because when you're on the job market, you're not. Yeah. Happy. Um, so now are you happy with what you have or are you thinking about another degree? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually really stoked with what I have. And it's I think um, so aquaculture broadly and marine aquaculture specifically are starting to become really prominent arenas um, in terms of like both industry policy and and academia. 
So I, there's been a wealth of opportunities for me to like look at. And, um, you know, I've done consulting stuff on aquaculture projects, which I've really enjoyed because there's a lot of flexibility. Um, and it's, you know, I love to write. So just getting to write reports and things like that. And then um, I'm actually starting a postdoc in uh, this summer, um, an aquaculture or marine aquaculture policy project. Um, in July. Yeah, I think in July, um, which sort of like is a good integration of like my previous policy experience and then all of the knowledge and skills that I've gained during my PhD and kind of like molding them into an applied project that's going to be useful um, for the U.S. mariculture industry. Wow, that's fascinating. Well, congratulations on your postdoc. Like this is (laughs) This is a great opportunity. Talking about Australia, um, you said in your um, Grad Impact profile that you're collaborating with the Nature Conservancy's Australia office. How did that happen? Yeah, so I have uh, some really awesome mentors in my life who are very, um, you know, have been in this arena for a while and are very like well integrated into sort of the mariculture networks. And so um, the postdoc in my lab who was working on some of the same projects as I was, she actually used to live in New Zealand and worked in Australia. And so she had a bunch of contacts in in Australia. And um, my advisor had this NSF grant. And as part of an NSF grant, you can apply for additional funding for a non-academic internship for a grad student on the grant. So they basically want to like get people into industry experience and NGO experience. Some trying to create different pathways from a PhD other than academia. Um, So we applied for that funding after I had built up a network um, in Australia and sort of identified uh, this project that I've been working on with the Nature Conservancy and yeah, got that funding and and have been working with them since since July. Of wow, last awesome. Century. Yeah, so trying to get that project wrapped up actually in the next couple of next couple of months. Oh really? Because I thought you might be able to actually like do some work there since you're going to move there. Yeah, I mean, that would be the dream. Um, So at some point, once I'm there, I'm going to be presenting my results to different um, government agencies across Australia. And so just sort of seeing where the chips fall after those those meetings and maybe doing some consulting or, um, you know, working with them in some capacity on on the outcomes of that research. Yeah, that would be that would be perfect. Oh, I know. I was like, <laughs> fingers crossed. <Yeah. laughs> so talking about funding, you are a recipient of the uh, PU Scholar Award, as you mentioned, the NSF Intern Fellowship. How mm-hmm. does um, fellowship and awards have um, helped you during your graduate journey? Oh, man. Um, I, tremendously. Uh, so I have only had to teach one semester of my entire five-year Uh, degree. And I have friends who have had to teach every single semester of their degree. So just having like that much more flexibility, that much more time to focus on my own research. Like, I don't know how some people do it, honestly. Like I've been very uh, privileged in the opportunities that I've had to like, just focus on what my work as opposed to having to lecture and and teach and grade and things like that but yeah so it's been it's been imperative to me like being able to finish quite efficiently and like be very efficient in my in my dissertation work um and it's also been really nice to sort of build a network outside of my department I've gotten to meet a lot of people um who have also received um the PEO scholar award or who are involved with NSF work Um, so my network has definitely gotten to expand and not just like professionally, but just socially getting to know people outside of my department, our department's quite small. And so, um, it's been really nice to sort of like have an extension of my, um, grad student geography network in, in other departments. And, um, yeah, so it's just been, I think in, at, at the like core of it is just like, it has like added these you know, not imperative experiences to my, um, to my degree, but just like added value to my degree in terms of getting to do 
extra research and also getting to know people I probably wouldn't have gotten to know if I hadn't received that award. As a graduating PhD student, what are your advices um, for students, you know, going through their dissertation, struggling with writing and um, you know, we, you always go through that phase where, like, where you think like, why am I even doing this PhD? Yeah. What do you tell those people? I, I feel really fortunate because I had a really strong relationship with my advisor before I even started. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I, I got lucky in terms of not having to like start off building a relationship, but I, I highly recommend building that relationship with your advisor. And what, like, for example, my first year or two, I, and even now, like I have scheduled like bi-weekly meetings with my advisor, just to, like check in. And I know everyone's advisor is different and maybe that's not their style, but just like maybe establishing a way for you to connect with your advisor on a scheduled basis, whether that's every two weeks, every month, every six weeks, whatever. But like having scheduled time with your advisor, not only to just present what you've been working on and to get feedback, but just sort of like establishing that connection with your advisor. Because I I have like several friends who, you know, have had to switch advisors later in their PhD. And, and like, I feel like getting in early, either you can establish that strong relationship or you can recognize earlier, sort of maybe if you and your advisor aren't the best fit. And so you can maybe navigate switching advisors a little bit earlier in your career. Um, So really try to, my first piece of advice would be like trying to establish a strong um, working relationship with your advisor and having consistent meetings with them based on their schedule, based on your schedule, what you're comfortable with. So that would be my first thing. And then I guess like my second thing, I don't know, like I have really enjoyed my PhD experience and I feel like that's not the case for everyone, which makes me really, really sad. But just know that like, regardless of what you produce or what your dissertation comes out of, like you're still a person outside of your degree. Like it's great that you're like pushing really hard and being productive and and going for this degree. Like it's very impressive and like it takes a certain type of person to be able to do that. But also recognize the fact that like, if you aren't successful in your PhD, whether that means you don't like get a fellowship or don't produce as much as you wanted to, or you don't finish your PhD, even like you're still who you are outside of that degree. And I think for me, like realizing that my PhD wasn't my identity was really helpful in sort of not like investing my life and my self-confidence and my perceptions of myself in, in this degree that is going to, you know, be over in five years and then I'll use it. But like, you're still who you are without it. And, and I think that's really important to recognize because I think people get really focused on like how their PhD is emblematic of their like work ethic or their intelligence or um, their, you know, networks. And I think wrapping your identity up in, in something like that is, is, can be problematic. And I think that's where people get really stressed out. And so I think if you can, work to sort of like say, this is just something I do. It's not who I am, that that can kind of help like take the pressure off of like being the best or, you know, publishing at a super high impact journal or getting every award you apply to, you know, it's just sort of like, I always, I, I think I enjoyed my PhD is because I was doing it because I knew I needed it to do like professional stuff that I wanted to do and not necessarily because it was a reflection of like my intelligence or you know my work ethic well thank you those are very very important um advice especially you know as the one um on your PhD is not who you are Mm -hmm. um I think it's yeah sometimes we tend to forget that All right. Well, thank you so much for this great conversation. It was awesome. Um, I really appreciate your time. Um, So yeah, thank you for everything and um, good luck on your new adventure. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was so nice talking to you and good luck with your your final year and with the job search. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Thank you.